Well, this was something emotional. I almost cry a little. But how many chairs do we have now in the party? Like, we have the bug, velvet, and now the guy. Do I miss someone? I don't think so. What's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? <laughs> the hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Why do you all turn into well work? Demon Blight! Even the in girl! Why is this happening? They're demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence. All of that energy spilling from their bodies. That's what causes the demon blight? Why are they surprised? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far. Track them down at all costs. How come they are not turning to masters? We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. Okay, why we go back? Why not uh, defeat that red corner master? A foe worth killing. Oh, my God. 
What does it mean to become an adult? <laughs> the eternal question of youth. Have you ever heard of the ceremony of adulthood? It's a yearly tradition on this island. If I remember right, it's totally wild. Everyone throws bananas and porringes at each other. Traditionally, yes, but things have changed over the years. Bananas and porringes are a thing of the past. People are always reaching for bigger and better things, right? In this case, it's watermelons. Whole watermelons. You're throwing watermelons? That's gotta hurt. Trust me, I know. But watermelons are the least of our worries. Recently, people have started flinging coconuts. Coconuts? Those things are as hard as rocks! Trust me, I know. Like getting hit with a brick. Now, every year, there are some kids who never make it to adulthood. You don't mean they... Yeah, I've kept putting it off myself, but it looks like this year, I've got no choice but to participate. That's crazy! It's far too dangerous! And more importantly, how does it make someone an adult? There are ancient traditions that say overcoming danger marks a child's coming of age. Some people still cling to the old ways. You've hit the nail on the head. There are lots of old folks that sit around complaining how weak as darn kids are. The hypocrites. Back then, they used bananas and watermelons. They even cracked the watermelons ahead of time. I don't think cracking a coconut would help much either. So that's why you're standing about looking blue. I'm so ashamed of myself for being scared. If you don't want to do the ceremony, why not just skip it? I'd love to, but I don't really have a choice. I wouldn't be able to show my face around here if I chickened out. Having the courage to say no to something you don't feel is right. Isn't that the true mark of an adult? Wait. You're right! <laughs> now I can finally become an adult! Oh, yeah! Look how grown up I am! <laughs> and getting carried away with yourself and acting the fool is the true mark of immaturity. Sorry, you're right. Well, that was the detour I didn't expect to take. Where are we going? Where's my mom? Kamalana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. I wouldn't want mom to be sad. All right, you're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans. For their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. 
So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realized this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon blight. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons, or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominat. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse Point... Clever boy! That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So he's out, pal. So you're saying it's all my fault. What's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Are we the bad guys? Yes, we are. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um, uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. Game, you bet I'm not doing something to this, but she already yeah. suffered so much. So she is. Thank you, Kamawana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. Malevolence is born of emotion, you see. But your kind must have found a way around it. Malachim experience emotions too. But Malachim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Moloch turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Moloch with something that turned it into a wyvern. 
Was it malevolence? To Malachim, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Moloch is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette... That must be what Aizen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. So I rescued this poacher who'd run away from one of those class four islands, right? She mentioned something about being hired by some chef to go hunt a rare wolf on the island. But she didn't see a single blasted critter on that island, let alone any rare wolf. Place was empty. Then why did she run away? Even though she never saw nothing, she kept hearing some beast howling round the island. Freaked her right out, I tell ya. When she got back to her boat, her food had been pilfered and her ship was scratched up to hell. She got out of there as quick as she could, but her ship sunk soon as she hit open water. Hmm. Sounds like whatever's there is as smart and manipulative as it is vicious. Sounds like. Later I heard some talk about how several exorcists had gotten killed on that island. If you plan on going, you'd best be very cautious. I guess we get a new state. But this is gonna be fall for tonight. Or today. How much did I call? Three? Four hours? Eh? Yeah, I guess this is a good point to end. And right on time actually. So, hope you enjoyed this and I'm not sure it's gonna end and the right here. So, aloha.